Do you want to use Asana to help run your real estate business, but you just don't know where to start? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you five ways to do just that. So no matter whether you're just starting out and you want to find out a little bit more or whether you've already started experimenting and you now want to fully commit, this video is for you. Hi there and welcome to the channel. I'm Andy Gort, a real estate investor and coach. Every week I release free content to help you systemize your real estate business so that you can focus on what's most important to you. Coming up in this video, how to go and reduce overwhelm so that you can manage your to-do list, how to go and keep track of what your virtual assistants are working on using a board, how to save time by creating templates for repeating projects, how to organize and schedule your SOPs, and lastly, how to create and manage your various real estate projects. I'll share an overview of each of these different areas to go and show you how it works in my own business and I'll also provide links to other videos that I've done so that you can go into a lot more detail and implement it in your own business. Plus at the end of the video I'm going to share a brand new free quiz that you can take to assess your business, identify your strengths and weaknesses and then focus on those areas that are most important to go and take your business to the next level so keep watching. Timestamps for each section are in the description below if you want to hop about and do let me know in the comments below are you currently using Asana and if so what you use it for I'd love to hear but other than that let's get into the demo so I'm currently here in my Asana account and the first thing I want to show you is how to go and manage uh, your tasks in Asana now there's a book by a chap called David Allen called getting things done and he talks about managing your open loops and an open loop is anything that is floating around in your head that you know that you need to do but you can't do it there and then so for example maybe it's get your car MOT'd or go and phone somebody back about a wedding invite whatever it is we have these things that are in our head, uh, but we need to go and get them down uh, and out of our head because our, our heads are for having ideas, not for storing them. First thing to do is just go and uh, let me show you how to quickly add a task. So here on the top left, you can see we've got create. So if I just go and click on that one, we can create a task. And then this brings up the quick task pane. To go and use this, it's very simple. Just go and type the task. Um, so let's go and say um, phone um, Sam about wedding invite. Uh, we can go and add a project if we want to, uh, or we could just go and give it a, a quick name. So, uh, I wedding uh, in June uh, 2024, uh, and then we can just go create task. So that very easily uh, will go and save the um, task into our task list. As well as adding a task, uh, we also want to go and manage them and see what's landed in our tasks uh, list. So if I just go here to my tasks on the top left, uh, we've got various sections. So we've got to be processed, today, upcoming, later, no due date. Um, so to be processed, this is where um, tasks that we create or tasks that people allocate to us uh, appear. So if I just go and click on this one, got a long list of tasks here. Um, we can actually go and see um, a few of the tasks that have been um, created previously. Um, and here we can go and just add a new task. So I could just add one here, add a task. So this is a test task. Um, we could then go and give it a due date. So let's go and say it's for tomorrow. Um, and that puts it to the top. Um, and we can see we've got a couple of tasks uh, here. Um, so these are all the tasks that are to be processed. And I recommend that every day you go through these and you sort of select when you want to go and do them. So some of them are very obvious, like the tasks for tomorrow. So if I just go and click on one of these tasks, I can then click here where it says to be processed and move it to upcoming, which is uh, tasks over the next seven days. Uh, and then as the dates roll around, uh, they'll automatically be moved in the, into this today section. Sometimes we want to do tasks a little bit further in the future. So I could just create a new task and call this future task. Uh, maybe that's due, um, say, middle of the month. So let's say 16th of June. Um, so for that one, I'd move that to the upcoming, sorry, the uh, later. And again, when the date rolls around, it will be put into the upcoming and then the today uh, section. Um, and um, we can also have tasks that have no due date. So we can just create a no due date task. Uh, and then I could then move that to no due date and we can then go and review those and add dates um, at a later time. If you do want to know more about managing uh, my tasks in Asana, then do go and check the link above uh, or in the description below. And I go into a lot more detail in that uh, other video. Next up on the list is how to go and work with your virtual assistant and how to keep an eye on the tasks that they are currently working on. So if I go to one of my virtual assistants boards uh, here on the left hand side, I'm just going to go to a board that I've starred uh, and then I've got Marge tasks. And here I've got various sections. I've got the backlog, priority working on blocked to check and complete. 
and each of these sections tells me about various tasks. So tasks that are in the backlog are things that I've had a bit of an idea about, um, but I don't want um, the VA to start working on it yet. So I'll just sort of chuck an idea into backlog. When I'm then um, confident and I want uh, the virtual assistant to start working on it, I will then drop the task into priority. Um, I'll set a deadline, so when I want to be completed by it, and I'll uh, assign the task to that virtual assistant. So here, this is Marge. The great thing about this is that as soon as um, Marge has then started to work on something, she'll drag it into her working on column. So then I'll know really easily uh, what she's working on. Um, and also I can rearrange things in this column um, to uh, make things more or less of a priority. If something's blocked, so perhaps uh, she can't access a website or maybe uh, she needs some input, uh, I can. she'll move the task into blocked and then I can then go and resolve it. Um, and she quite often will just go and ping me a quick message to let me know um, that she can't progress with the task. And then once I've resolved the blocker, I'll then move it back into priority so she knows it's ready to go. Then once things are done, it will go into ch to check and I can go and review it and it will be allocated to me and I'll just go and quickly review it. Um, and then lastly, when everything is complete, we'll then put it into the complete column. So I have done a whole video on this and how to set it up and how to use it. So again, do go and check the link above uh, or in the description below to find out in more detail exactly how to use this virtual assistant board in Asana. A lot of what we do in our real estate business is repeated. And that's why Asana is great for creating templates to save you time for things that you do uh, on a regular basis. So for example, uh, perhaps uh, when we're going and purchasing a property, we may go through the same set of steps or actions. And so we can create a project and call it a template. And then we can just go and duplicate that whenever we have a new property uh, come through that we want to go and purchase. Now, the official templates with Asana um, is a little bit more structured and uh, it works a little better, but that is part of the Asana paid plan. So you can sort of hack it a little bit um, to go and get a few of the same features. It doesn't work quite as well, um, but I'll quickly show you how to do that. And again, there is another video link above uh, about how to go and uh, use Asana with some sort of templates. Um, so do check it out. The link's also in the description. So I'm currently here, I've just got a team that I've called administration and we've got various projects here and I've just called them templates. So for example, let's go and take this one, which is the um, webinar template. So uh, if I open this one, we can see that we've just got a set of tasks. Uh, some of them have got some subtasks. We've also got some sections um, and each of these, um, clearly we don't have to start from scratch every time I run a webinar, which is about once a month. So instead we refine this template and then we just go and duplicate it whenever we want to create a new webinar. So let me quickly show you how to do that. So I'm in the webinar template project. Just go to the drop down and click duplicate. We'll give it a name. So we have sort of a naming convention. So I'll just go hashtag 002 if it's the second webinar. And then let's say this is the webinar and then let's just put in the date for the webinar. So maybe the 5th of June 23. Uh, and then you can select what you want to go and duplicate. So we will probably go and duplicate the description, uh, the assignees definitely, due dates we won't worry with, um, etc. And some of these are uh, premium, which is why they're uh, in a different color. So once you've selected all the bits that you want to duplicate, just literally click create new project. So it'll then go and do its thing and eventually it'll appear here uh, again under administration. So if I have a quick look here, we can see we've now got hashtag 002 uh, and there is this new project um, and we can go and add in all the relevant due dates, etc. So it's a little bit of a hack. Um, it doesn't work quite as well as the official Asana way of using templates. But as I said, you can do this on the free plan and do check out that other video to find out more. If you're finding this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks. So a big part of running your real estate business is tasks that you do on a regular basis or even outsource. And the more that you can go and create tasks for other people, the more you can free up your time to work on those more strategic value add things. So uh, the use of standard operating procedures or SOPs is a big part of that. Now, uh, in my real estate business, I actually go and write the SOPs in a tool called Notion. And if you do want to know more about Notion, how to write your SOPs, how to manage them, then do go and check this video out here um, or again, link in the description. But because Notion isn't quite where I want it in terms of tasks, I still keep the actual task reminders um, and task allocation uh, in Asana. So I store all of my SOPs depending on the department. So you can see here that I've got sourcing SOPs, so finding properties deals and I've broken these down um, into the various um, columns on a board view based on the frequency. 
So things that we do daily, weekly, uh, nothing fortnightly, monthly, quarterly, etc. Um, and so each of these, um, I've created a task. Um, so for example, I've got to send out landlord letters um, and this is uh, in weekly. Uh, and if I set a due date, so let's say that we're gonna do this um, every, um, every week and we'll do it on a Friday. So if I set the 2nd of June, uh, then when we click into the date, we can go set to repeat. And I'm going to put this just weekly, set to repeat, and you can see that it's now highlighted all of the Friday days. So when I go and complete it for the second, it will then duplicate the task and set the due date as the ninth. Um, so it's a really easy way. Um, assign it to various people. Um, just store them uh, out of the way because they're just regular tasks. So you don't want to have it on like your VA's board, um, like I showed you in one of the earlier sections. Those are for one-off tasks. For repeating ones, store it here. Um, in your SOP per department, um, per frequency, and that makes it really easy for you to then also go and keep tabs on them and you can always go and pause them, move them into a different column if you're no longer using them. Um, and also just a quick note, I also do store the link um, for each of these uh, in the description. So uh, to the Notion page in the description, I'll just put a link um, so that's easy. If somebody else was to pick this um, SOP up, they could easily work out how to do it and find the instructions and the step-by-step -step, um, video as well. And last but by no means least, Asana is brilliant at going and managing projects. It's a project management tool. That's what it's all about. And so if perhaps you're doing a refurbishment, um, Asana can be really useful for managing those projects. So I've got a quick example here, a house refurbishment. So if I open this project, um, we've got various sections. So maybe the preparation. So before we actually start the project, uh, and then we've got the refurbishment part uh, in a different section. Um, and if you look at these in board view, you can see them based on the different columns um, or back to list view. Um, but you can go and use the, um, the templated uh, example that I had earlier. So if you're refurbishing on a regular basis and you want some reminders, um, you could go and combine the two. But Asana is a really good way just to go and sort of brain dump. So uh, as well as the refurbishment, we want to choose the paint. Um, we may want to go and um, buy the furniture. So you can just go and add in all of the tasks, all of those bits that you need to remember um, for your various projects. And these could be projects throughout um, your purchasing of a property. It could be how you go and onboard your tenants, the checklist there. Um, but Asana um, is great to go and just keep tabs on all of those tasks, um, go and set the due deadlines, uh, assignees, uh, et cetera, um, for each of the things that you're working on. So at the start of the video, I told you all about a brand new free quiz that I've created to help you with your real estate business. So if you just go to the website real-estate-systemization-quiz.scoreapp.com, don't worry, I'll put a link in the uh, description. Uh, if you just head over to that website, you can just take a quick quiz. Uh, it's 13 questions, they're multiple choice, it's really, really quick. Uh, and that will help you go and identify various areas of your business where things may need a little bit of help um, and some suggestions of how you can go and improve your business. Um, you can also go and book a call with me if that's useful um, to go and really take your real estate business to the next level. For more information on how to use Asana from setting up an account, using boards, managing your tasks, working with a VA, etc., I've created a whole playlist on it. So do check it out here. But other than that, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a brilliant rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.